Hi folks, party it. Okay, so last week I'm through the hinges. Hopefully that went well for you. If not, have a wee look at the, the video again. Should be okay. Now what we're gonna do, I was initially gonna do the uh, the chamfers around the separation on the uh, router with my diamond bit. <clears throat> but I sort of thought, um, obviously not everybody has a diamond bit and if you're sort of using maybe a bit that's been used like a few times you're going to probably end up you know with more sort of like a risk of sort of damage or tear out plus when it comes to sort of the the edges at the back that have been you know have our mortises you run a sort of router across there you're definitely high risk of sort of knocking off them wee edges so decided what we'll do is We'll actually add the, the bevels, chamfers, with uh, by hand, just with sandpaper. So first thing I want to do is, we're going to actually go around this with masking tape. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So to get a nice sort of like, rather than try to get it like exactly the whole way around, we're just going to put the chamf or the, the masking tape around, actually a wee bit above the separation, and then we're going to, it'll produce like a perfect mask for us um, when we go to um, chamfer and that'll sort of like help with adding a wee bit of finish a wee bit of sand sealer to these okay and then we can remove that slightly thin a bit and then wax it perfect okay so i'll just put this tape around first show you what i mean So we're going to go slightly high, a few millimeters above, okay, see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to rub that down at the edge okay you want it nice and tight there okay okay i'll do that one in a minute but just to show you we're starting off 180 grit okay hard block And to sort of cut the sandpaper off, you want to sort of go in an upward direction. So, so this isn't, we're actually not sort of doing the chamfer at the minute. What we're doing is just actually cutting off that tape, get out of the way. Okay, so then you can remove that tape. Obviously there's a wee bit in the mortise there. Out. Okay, so <laughs> that sort of comes out pretty. You could try and go around it really sort of accurately, but you know, sure, you don't have to, and that makes it very easy. Okay, in the bin. <clears throat> so Remember, we want to produce a chamfer here. We've got the thickness of our veneer, but we want to sort of show some sycamore because I think it'll be nice to see the sycamore on the break as well. Okay, so this time, sort of want to get approximately 
sort of 45 degree angle. Okay, it's just a prox. And we're going to be sort of up and down. Just be careful because when you're at the edge here, you know, you can produce, because your weight's coming sort of off the edge, you can produce a larger sort of chamfer. And we want it to sort of be, you know, nice and consistent the whole way around. Just give it a wee vac. <clears throat> so what we'll have is we have the uh, the veneer and there's a small amount of sycamore. Okay, so just keep an eye on the sycamore because it's very important that you sort of don't end up with a big wide bit of sycamore. You'll just have to maybe hold it up to the light, you know, to gauge. And I think that's a good starting point. So we'll ground the rest and then we'll dress that up and fine tune it. So remember guys, these are the sort of details that they're the final sort of details. You know, it's very important you take a bit of time and get these right. Because this is what is going to be seen. The neater it is, the crisper it is, you don't want to be sort of chamfering and going, you know, round the edge like that. No, no, no. We want sort of nice bevels to meet at them corners. This is the attention to detail. It'll set your boxes apart. <clears throat> from the competition. <laughs> Such reasonable pressure, guys. And if you feel that your <clears throat> your grid's getting worn out, just just put a new bit on. Okay, so you want to just look over it just to see if we've got a wee bit of second more chunk from there. Just a wee bit. So we'll just open that up a wee bit more. <clears throat> Now, what I've sort of got now is I've got sort of an equal sort of chamfer there that you can see on the sycamore and the walnut veneer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the other edges 
and then we're going to change the 180 to 400 and just fine tune that remember we want consistent chamfers and we want them nice and neat at these corners very important And saying that, I mean, if you have a batch of boxes to do, that's far too time consuming. So you'd want to start off with a brand new chamfer bit and maybe just, you know, set the fence or the depth so that it's taken off a fraction each time so you get really sort of clean cuts. You can add some masking tape around the same. Um, that'll also protect your box when you're pushing it against the fence. No, so you don't get any sort of damage to your, your finish. Just remember to stop every so often and just check that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is <clears throat> just go to 400 and see I've got a wee bit of uh, abrasive on that plastic block. It's just to stop it sliding about, give it a wee bit more grip. Okay, <clears throat> that looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do tape this one up on the uh, the lower part. Do the same. I'm then going to put the lid down on top just to see how much sycamore we're going to see. And then if we want to sort of add a bit more, we just increase that sort of you know chamfer. Okay. So see you in a wee minute. Right, folks. Chamfer's done. <laughs>
it's hard to sort of pick up but if you combine you know you can sort of see the sycamore if you want through there that's just enough okay you don't want really any more than that it's just sort of a detail you want to show rather than this massive chamfer okay so we got that done okay so what we're going to do is we're going to add some sand and sealer or shellac around here now you don't want to be brushing that on because it'll just go into the inside and go down the front and all that sort of stuff some people do some people maybe behind the camera do anyway so we cloth just rolled up Dip it in, let it absorb in, okay. So, what we want is we want to come down this direction. You don't want to be going up, or you're just going to like push fluid into the the mortise, okay. So I go along the back edge, the back edge first. So she makes it nice and clean, yeah. That is also hitting that wee chamfer, okay? Going on it again. Okay, so I started this edge, but I push off there first, like that. guys <clears throat> that's all it needs it just needs one coat of sand sitter remember we're just sealing that then we're going to denib it webrax wax doesn't need to be a big sort of mega finish okay we want the outside to be and the inside to be subtle some some people gloss these edges if that's what you want to do that's what you want to do to me that's a wee bit too much because the exterior if you're going to gloss something is where the gloss should be the interior should be nice delicate okay let it absorb in <clears throat> have a wee cough Go along here. Just check your bevel. Yep. Right. Go along. Just check your bevels have all been hit. Lovely. <clears throat> okay, we're going to let that dry in 10 or 15 minutes. And then what we're going to do in the meantime is we're going to cut the base to size, which is going to be lined. So it needs to be cut slightly smaller. So I'm going to show you a way of how to cut this and line it so that it's a nice, neat fit rather than just fabric over the bottom you know which is just a wee bit untidy plus it never lasts with it moving about it eventually will peel off okay so see you in a wee minute all right folks what we're going to do is we're going to cut the base now i took a wee measurement there the base size the opening anyway is 291 
and a half by one nine one and a half. Okay. So we have to allow for the fabric because the fabric's actually going to wrap around the side. It's going to give us a lovely snug fit. So taking that off, the fabric's approximately 0.6, and then you have to take into account a wee bit of double sided tape. But we're looking at sort of 290.4 by 190.4. Now, when I go to cut my bases, I actually tilt the blade by about three degrees, okay? So that it gets me a very small bevel. This allows the fabric to, it actually allows it to go in to the base, you know, a wee bit easier, but yet the top edge, the part that fits around, that rebate that's in the, the box is nice and neat. Okay, so <clears throat> with tilting the blade, you'll have to sort of just calibrate your fence. You can't go by, you know, it's scale because of the blade's tilted now. So what I usually do is I have a piece of um, MDF that I is like sort of 300 by 200 so it's oversized to start off with so what I do is I take sort of a millimeter off each side and then I measure the wood and then adjust the scale to this current size okay of course you have to remember that um, if somebody else is going on to your saw later on that you have to, I put that we we sort of bit of paper in because I'm old all right <laughs> but a wee bit of paper in just to say calibrate so that needs recalibrate again I also have another wee bit of paper here. I'm only 25, but th that's considered old. So that's to let anybody else who comes in. I'm the only one operates a saw. So it's to let me know that the blade's tilted. And I have to bring it back to 90 again. Okay. Just remember that. Right. So I've calibrated, tilted, got my piece here what I do is I just mark a pencil mark in the top that is the side that's going to have the fabric on so the bevel is running like this okay that's it all so we want to make a cut um, we're going to go on the uh, width is 190.4 so I'll make a cut at 191.4 and turn it around and do the final cut on the other side okay Let's see. Okay. I have to say, you know, the anchor system, very, very good. Now, I don't sort of cut any of the sort of fancy joints or anything like that. But as a, an accurate sort of repeat sort of position system, you know, it definitely sort of, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it beats digital sort of any day. Um, because, of course, digital, well, I suppose it depends on the, you know, the digital scale you're using, but your battery can run out. Does it remember the zero? You know, all that sort of stuff. So, lovely system. I'm going to cut this, and then we're going to cover it in sort of double-sided tape and get it in, and, and fabric, of course, okay? Remember guys, to sort of remember to keep your knife on. Okay, it's hard to have I know them guards are chunky and all that. I don't really sort of have my guard on that much, but I always have a knife on. Okay, turn that in and move the fence. Remember, we want to leave a millimeter to the other side.
Okay guys, that's a cut. Bevels are going this way. It's only a small bevel, okay? Just helps, it helps get a neat fit, but then it eases the sort of like um, the fitting, if you know what I mean. So let's go up to the next workshop. We're gonna cover this and then test our fit. Okay, let's go. Right folks, got our base. We got a couple of fits double-sided. This is actually A4 double-sided. You can use the rules of double-sided if you want. We sort of get these because it just saves, obviously, using sort of lots of rules. So, now first, this is quite oversized now, okay? This isn't sort of like the exact size to start off with. So you want to sort of line it so that it's run over that edge and run over this edge by plenty, okay? Okay, so you can see that's down on one edge. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna, we'll do the end first, I suppose. You got that tight on the table, fold it over. Okay, give it a bit of pressure and a bit of a wiggle. And then with your nice sharp scalpel. Just pull that off there. Okay. So it's the bin. So what we want to do here is we want to go down. Go down, that straightens that out. As you can see. And then over. Give it a good wiggle. Okay. There and there. Actually. Just so we're hanging very slightly. Give it a wee trim. Nice and neat. Watch your fingers. Okay, so the same there. Put it down pressure-wise and bring her up. Okay. Nice and neat, guys. Rub those corners down, or the, sorry, the edges. Just want to make sure that that's well taken. Okay, all day is good event. So we'll then do this half. Now, you want to try and get that as close as possible. Okay, but you don't want that, <laughs> you know, because you're just going to have a dip in your fabric. Let's get this up. So again, you want to go off, off, off. I'll bring that up. Rub along that edge. Okay, so this edge up, pressure, and then Ok, 
Okay, and then slice this down. Down and up. to get that off sometimes eh okay same on the other side okay so up along there it's well taken And just check the edges. Let's see if that's a couple bit away from that. Let's see. That's okay. That's good. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take off that and then pop on the fabric. Okay, so clear table, pop this off. from the side okay and then pop off from here Okay, so we'll set that there. We'll get our fabric. Okay, so set the good face, the good face of your suede, or whatever fabric you're using, facing down. Okay, let's give us some of this junk. Cut the other side. Okay, guys, remember, definitely start off with a sharp scalpel blade. You're just gonna, just gonna life, <laughs> make life miserable for yourself. Um, okay, so this is just sort of done in the same way that we've done the uh, double set of tape. So, pick it up first, like this. Okay, down, pressure down. Glasses on, because I can't see. Okay, and. Okay. Let's just bring that away from there. And then what we'll do is, we'll do the other side. Okay, so what we've got to do is going to screw these up there. Okay, so we end up with that. Same as the same as the other ways. 
Đấy. So on this wee bit, just gotta be careful. Same on this. Okay, so that's what we're like so far. And then last one. Okay. <clears throat> So there you go guys, <clears throat> line the whole way around, once that goes in to your cavity, <laughs> once that goes in to your box cavity, okay, there's no way that's coming off, okay, as opposed to just sticking it on the bottom, you know, that's going to come off over time. This nice and neat, and with that wee bevel goes in. Let's check it, All right, guys. Okay, so let's try it. <clears throat> That's neat, and it just hits. It just sits that wee bit proud, which is the thickness of the fabric, which just lifts it off the table, so that if people are moving it about, you know it's the fabric that's on their bedside table, maybe which is highly polished or whatever. So, now if you find when you go to put it in that it's a wee bit sort of too snug, what you can do is you can sort of hammer the edges, okay, you know, just to depress that and then that should sort of ease it in. Obviously, you don't want it so tight that you're sort of whacking it in, and um, it's just going to sort of like be putting pressure on your joints. Okay, that's <laughs> your The actual mitres. Okay, so what? When you get sort of, we're not actually gluing this in at this stage, but when you get to the, the stage where you are gluing it in and you've got corners like that, you can just take sort of. The edge of the scalpel and just tidy them up not by cutting them but by sort of just pushing them into the actual cavity there okay so nice and neat once we get glue on that that'll be lovely and clean all the dust off the inside so we've got these edges what we're going to do is go over this very lightly denip it with sort of uh you know, 1000 grit and then uh, wear bracks it and then add a wee bit of wax. Okay, we'll do that in a wee minute. Right, chaps, 1000 grit. Okay, just for hand. We're not actually like removing material in a sense, we're just knocking off the nibs. So, and just your chamfer very lightly with 1000. And then your Webrax disc, don't be putting it on the machine, <laughs> just fling the box all over the place. So what I'll do is I'll just cut a wee bit of that actually. Okay, so remember, don't go like this into the mortises because you're just going to be ripping stuff off. You could even actually rip a wee bit of grain off, so, so. 
Remember, this is just a matted. Okay, so that's just a matted to remove any shiny areas. Lovely. Your lid, the same. And you can sort of see guys in thousand grit that finish that I use it's just just white dust it's not like you know lumps of sort of like gum or anything like that okay just give them a wee back So what I'll do at this stage is I'll remove the uh, masking tape. It's okay if a wee bit of wax goes onto your side because that's our wax side. So that can be easily sort of, you know, buffed off. So we'll take this off. Let's see where's the start point. Okay. Okay, again with the wax, small amount, not loads. Okay, so again, you want to sort of be coming off and going this way, off that way, and off that way. So remember, the inner lips is not about sort of having sort of uh, lots of finish on it. It's about the feel. If somebody opens that jewelry box, keepsake box, whatever. They want to feel that it's nice and smooth, you know. And if it's glossy, of course that's going to be smooth. But they don't want to sort of feel that they can't touch the box. You know what I mean? You want people to interact with them and enjoy them and let them age through time and hand it down to their children and that's the whole idea of it you don't want sort of you don't want to design their <laughs> people are actually frightened of using you know okay so literally only a few minutes for that there of course you can go around with a, a you know soft rag give it a wee buff you know me that's just you know I like it but you have to just watch not too sort of heavy a pressure because you've got sort of cutouts and stuff here so and what we can do is we can go around the sort of outside where there might have been a wee bit of wax come over you know And the 
מצייד, ואלה הם כמובן. Hey guys, and then lovely and smooth. Just a nice wee bit of second work coming through there, folks. Just enough. That just highlights the join, the separation, sorry. That's really nice. So what we're going to do next is we're going to pop the base in, we're going to glue it in and then once that's dry we're going to line the inside, polish up the screws, fit the hinges and sell the box. Okay, that's the idea isn't it? So um, we'll get the base glued in, uh, let's see what we're like, okay, put that in now. Now remember we've got our wee glue groove in here. Brilliant wee channel for taking the excess glue. Okay. If you didn't, if you didn't do the glue groove, well, you're going to have to sort of push it in, turn it over, sort of poke out, you know, brush out, sort of, and then bring it back over again. Of course, that works as well, as well but this way, you know, very very clean. So I just use the yellow glue for this. You can use the white PVA, blah blah. blah. But you, I wouldn't go sort of mixing up epoxy or the, the board on two part stuff, you know, the sort of standard glue, you know. Okay, so this is the way I do it. I go away like this, you know. Okay. I sort of leave it slightly shy of the corners because the glue obviously wants to go sort of towards you and you don't want it to end up a big sort of puddle in the corner. Okay. Okay, so there's plenty of glue in there. Get our base. Okay guys, so just put a wee bit of card on top so that it's, uh, you know, in case there's anything in the press. Light pressure. Okay folks, so while we'll let that dry, or the, the glue dry in there, you know, sort of half an hour, an hour. Okay folks, so that's base in, got our lips, small chamfers done. Next week, do the final week, we'll line the inside, polish up the screws and assemble. Thanks very much, see you next week.